We're, We're here. here with Hard Happens TV. My name is Jen Saffron. I'm the Director of Communications at the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council. This is my fantastic colleague. Christiana Leach, and I'm the Artist Relations Manager at the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council. Council. All true. And we're here with a very special guest today. Francis, super special. Super special. Thank you. Francis Ladies. Cletus. Francis is an artist, cartoonist, graphic designer. He's a triple threat. Triple threat. <laughs> Currently has work on display in our offices. On the seventh floor. On the seventh floor as part of the Art on the Walls exhibition program that Christiana oversees. We're really excited to talk with you, Francis. Thank you for having me yeah. over. I'm excited as well. Yes. <laughs> and we have a special guest with us. Tell us the special guest. Yeah, he, he was a piece of wood off the shores of the Allegheny. That's amazing. <laughs> and we were walking down, what was it? Uh, Three Rivers Heritage Trail. Yeah. Totally. And there was this piece of wood bobbing in the river. And I told my daughters, hey, hang on, I'm going to sing, are you serious? Are you going to jump into the river? <laughs> 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 and picked it up. And, you know, I was always intrigued by the whole concept of uh, Pinocchio because, you know, it's like a, a sculptor's dream come true. There's an inanimate object that comes to life. And, yeah, that was the inspiration for this piece. Wow. It was called The Birth of Pinocchio. The birth of there Pinocchio. You go. For a closer look. And this is amazing. So this is actually just the way you found it, or did you shape it in any kind of I way? I shaped it a little bit. First of I all, I mean, I know, like probably here, but that could have been an opening that was already there, considering. No, I actually you went to Home Depot and bought some tools, and yeah, that was hard making that opening for yeah. the, the face to go in there. Isn't it incredible <laughs> what's in the river? I mean, I did participate with Allegheny Cleanways one time in cleaning garbage out of the river and uh, was kind of amazed by how much we could get out of the river in like two hours. There were like 10 of us on a oh, boat wow. um, with Allegheny Cleanways, who I greatly respect. And we were doing this as part of the Renew Festival, actually looking at art and reclaimed materials. And um, they originally started doing this to get tires out okay. of the yeah. the river but now there's so many other things obviously yeah. but now this is a piece of wood that must have probably traveled a long way off yeah, you know, because it was sure. shaped by the river by the water um actually i'm thinking of you know creating a bunch of different pieces all from wood that i've picked up from one of the rivers in pittsburgh hopefully so is it like you're, you're driving along and is it the particular shape of the wood yeah. or is it like there's wood no there's a particular <laughs> Wood. <laughs> wood in the river. <laughs> or it might be like sometimes it's like a particular shape, and you're like, it's that particular piece of wood that's attracting yeah. my eye. I mean, I <coughs> create these Pardon little me. sketches of everything that I want to work on, you know, and then it's in my head. Then you know, when you're going by and there's something that could be a good fit, I pick mm -hmm. it up. And sometimes it doesn't work, which is fine, you know. <laughs> and yeah, it just comes together. It's conceptual because you know my background is in advertising. Yeah. So all my art, I have right. an idea, a concept that evolves and becomes a piece. You know, it's not just about throwing some colors on a canvas. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the trajectory. <laughs> yeah, of how you got here. Like, oh you do, you've done so much. You've been living in so many different places. Yeah. And I think I, it's fascinating when you're several talents deep and... Fourth person off the table. Okay. You're several, yeah. several talents deep, and they all take different disciplines and focus. So just tell us how, how all this happened. Uh, Graphic design, okay. cartoonists. Talking about stuff. stereotypes, I wanted to go to art school. Yeah. But my mom and dad said, are you serious? There are starving artists all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> yeah, you I ended up already. getting a degree in chemistry, organic chemistry. and. Where did you do that? This was in the University of Bombay. Oh, sure. In India. Wow. And they recruited me from college. I joined Firestone, the tire company. Yes. I worked as a senior chemist and shift supervisor for wow. a plant called the Banbury Mixer, where they mix the black tire, you know, the rubber. Yeah. That eventually becomes the tire. And yeah, and I was <laughs> a totally a square peg in a round hole. It was a midfit. Misfit all along. Mm. Yeah, isn't it then, terrible trying to fit in? Yeah, it was, it was hard. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> okay, sorry. Mm. So one day I quit and went back home, and my mom was absolutely annoyed. She said, you know, multinational company, you got recruited from school. How can you just throw your job away? 
Mm. My dad, who incidentally worked for the Reader's Digest all his life, said, let's go and grab a beer. <laughs> and Good we, dad. We, yeah, and we drank till the wee hours of the morning, came back home, and I had a plan. <laughs> I went back to school, got a diploma in advertising management, did a copywriting workshop, got into advertising. And that's how I, you know, came in touch with big ideas, visual ideas. Yeah, yeah. And my wife to be, <laughs> she cool. worked in advertising as well at that point. Yeah, and you know, I shifted from the left brain world of chemistry to doing something creative at an ad agency. Yeah, I do think it's really interesting. My son's about to go to college. That I've had to listen recently to how much anxiety people walk around with around those of us who choose to have creative lives. Yeah. And other parents are like, what do you mean? You, you don't know exactly what Leo's going to be doing in like 10 years? I was like, why would I know? He's going to go to college and discover a lot of things. Yeah. And he'll go to college and discover maybe the thing he thought for sure he liked, he didn't like. Yeah, or absolutely. maybe he'll bump up against something that's totally new. Um, but I also think that um, we somehow have still in our minds societally that art somehow isn't quite viable for some reason, and yet we do have statistics. I mean, GPAP yeah. can measure these things that, you know, 4.8 million Americans work in, in the arts. It's wow. a gigantic industry yeah. Yeah, it is. in our country. More people work in the arts than in tourism, than in the legal and medical industries combined. Wow. That's and we just need to keep telling that story because that's exactly why we have this television program to begin with, is to bring incredible people like yourselves on the show and talk about your story about how did you get to be making art and what are you doing, how are you doing it, and why is that important, and how can we find out more about you. Yeah. So thanks and the other part of the for story sharing is for Thank you for having me. people to actually support the arts so it doesn't become yeah. a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Artists are starving because you don't pay them. Right. Mm. But you want what they create. Right. So, okay, and so, they want it for free. And you want it, you can't have <laughs> right. it for free. Right, yeah. yeah. It so, up. graphic design, was it cartooning next, painting? Yeah, cartooning was something that evolved when I was working at agencies in India. Then I moved to Hong Kong. I worked with, you know, all the big agencies. I worked in with Hong Darcy. Kong. Yeah, I started with uh, FCB, which is Draft FCB, one of the mm -hmm. big agencies headquartered mm -hmm. in New York. Then we went to Hong Kong on our honeymoon. And while my wife went shopping, <laughs> I mean, one day, I went and met a few agency people. And the day before we were leaving to come back to India, I got an offer to wow. join. Wow. Yeah. I moved to Ogilvy and worked there for about four years. Wow. And then from Ogilvy, I moved to J. Walter Thompson, one of the other agencies. It was fun. I mean, it's, you know, it's a business oriented creativity, but yes. there's a lot of room to do creative work. Mm -hmm. And Hong Kong's not a terrible place to no, kind of check not. out as a no. newlywed. How cool. Yeah, that it was That must have been wonderful. It was. Yeah. Wow. And then how in the heck did you get to Pittsburgh? Then I started do doing some freelance work for this guy called Jim White, who was a creative director at this agency called Doe Anderson. Mm -hmm. This is in Louisville, Kentucky. And he said, you know what, do you want to work on Maker's Mark, the brand? And I had oh, worked at... <laughs> <laughs> I had worked and she was regal in Hong Kong, you know, mm. so he knew I had category experience. And, you know, I, I said, let me think about it. You know, I Googled Louisville, Kentucky, and it seemed like a good place to raise a family. Yeah. <laughs> Spoke with my wife, we did some more research, and we moved from Hong Kong to Louisville, Kentucky. Wow. <laughs> and I still remember getting 300 so, emails. Mumbai, Hong Kong. Louisville. Correct. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Down south. I, yeah. I got 300 emails with one word in it. Louisville question mark. <laughs> People going, what? What? Yeah, but it, it's a great town, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. We lived there for seven years. I worked on Maker's Mark for seven wow. years. Wow. Drank a lot of it, too. <laughs> Good. <laughs> because you need to it, sample the product. Well, you, you know? do. <laughs> and it's, it's a very tasty product. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Yeah, Maker's Mark and Ginger Ale. That's the way to go. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you hear it today on Art Happens TV. And then from Louisville, Pittsburgh. Yeah. The whole different Again, job, a whole nother... Yeah. Was it advertising? or? Yes, it was advertising. It was Mark USA. 
Oh, and, cool. Yeah, and I'm, again, I met this fantastic guy, Gordon Robertson, mm -hmm. who was a creative director at uh, Mark USA, and it happened that we worked at the same agency around the same time, but he worked at Darcy in St. Louis, and I worked at Darcy in Hong Kong. And we worked on the same brands, you know. It was That's wild. Budweiser's, Kittles, you know, all the big brands that Darcy had. And we did the same kind of work, but for two different markets. So it was completely different work. Interesting. So we started talking, and he said, you know, what about Pittsburgh and Mark USA? And I moved. And wow. yeah, got a chance to work on the Pennsylvania Lottery, Rite Aid, oh my um, gosh. Moen Faucets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was how we came to Pittsburgh. Wow. And now what? Now what are you doing? I work for Mylan Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, I absolutely. do their global creative and design. Wow. So I still try to balance the left brain, right brain. Guess what? After uh, all these years, yes. my chemistry degree is useful. Right, because you work at Mylan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> when these guys talk, I think, yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> think seriously, you're the graphic designer. <laughs> you're like, no, I do. I really actually do. Yeah. Full circle. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, tell us about your um, art making life. Yes. Okay. Not that graphic design isn't, but okay. like some of the more um, sculptural pieces, yeah. your, your paintings that are in the show, Karma mm. which will be up till the end of July, yeah. have a sculptural component to them. So well, I've always cool. painted all my life, you know, never been to art school. You know, it's all self-taught. You know, I had some good friends who were artists and a lot of inspiration from fellow, you know, kindred spirits, as mm. I call it. And they have guided me along the way. You know, one of them was a creative director at Draft FCB in India. And he, he's, he still sculpts in bronze and he's wow. a very accomplished sculptor in India. And along the way, the hardest thing for any artist is to find his or her own space. You know, it's about creating your own style. It's, it's easy to just look at something on YouTube or you know, on the internet somewhere and Bob try and... Ross. Yeah, it and is. replicate it, you know, yeah. but it's not your work. I mean, it's a good way to um, sharpen your skills and your execution skills, but the conceptual thinking is what sets you apart, you know, mm -hmm. because yeah. like in advertising, you have the two sides to it. One is what is the concept, you know, what is the big idea that can become a TV spot, that can become a print ad, it's one idea. And then you execute it, which is how you bring it to life, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a photographer or mm -hmm. an illustrator that'll help you bring it to life. Or... So likewise, I approach all my paintings and my sculptures or anything as a concept. Always doodle, you know. And some of these meetings, business meetings, are long and boring. So that's <laughs> when some of the doodling happens. <laughs> yeah, I yes, we, we know. We, we yeah. have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. We, we only go to interesting meetings and do interesting things all the short. time. Yeah. They last Short. only three minutes. We have <laughs> ten minute meetings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. Is it hard to shift? Because um, you know, when you're working on graphic design, you're thinking of a bigger concept for lots of people. Is it hard to shift and get into your own concepts that are just you're making pieces for yourself? Personal at this point? expression. Personal expression. So, is it hard to kind of go between the two, it's or are they hard. interconnected? Or it's not hard, but you have, yeah, there's a shift in your head because there are no business objectives, you mm -hmm. know, there's no target audience, you know. Right. Yeah, maybe there's a target audience, but you're trying to see if somebody can relate to what you do as a person. It's very personal, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a piece of canvas or a piece of wood that you picked up from the river, it's what you're going to add to it. Mm -hmm. And in advertising, there's a saying, you know, the best ads are made just like the worst ads on TV. It's the same process. There's a brief, there are a bunch of people who brainstorm, and what you produce in the end comes from the same place. But the good ads are inspired because the person who worked on it brings a little bit of himself or herself to it. True. And they take pride in it, they're passionate about it, mm. and sometimes you have to defend it because you know there are committees that are going to sit in business meetings and tear it apart, you know? Or we'll yeah. say it's too controversial, or it's too this, or it's too that. You which, might you might, which you don't really have to worry about when you make your own personal Exactly. Work. <laughs> yeah. You're doing your own thing, you're making Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah. Now you're going to go get more wood, is that what you were saying? Yeah, oh, no. after this interview we're going to walk down with my daughter uh, along the riverside. Nice. I bought a big bag and some gloves and things that's in the back of the car. Nice. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be as hot as it is now. 
Yeah, it's a little hot. Right now. Um, yeah. so, so how many shows have you had in Pittsburgh since you've been here? Actually, this is the first art show, oh, okay. which was, you know, like a full-fledged art show. <laughs> and GPAC, you know, you guys are doing a fantastic work. You know, I mean, great things coming out of you guys. Mm. Not just shows, you know, just everything you're doing for artists and art mm. in the city. Thanks. Love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so, I mean, this is how I met you. I met you through Jen. Mm. Yeah. I just didn't through realize Through his it was, daughter. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Through his daughter. Yeah, this is yeah. how it happens. <laughs> it is how it happens. It's very Communication, Pittsburgh. connections. Yeah. And, and she is completely left-brained, you know. She okay, ha yeah. I can see, you know, some of my genes at work now and then when yeah, she programs sure. stuff, but yeah, we're just different. Yeah. I have a family where my mom and my brother and I are all artists. My mom and my brother also taught high school art and art history. My dad and my other brother were in the army. So okay. we have like this very <laughs> like totally different. Yeah group of people, it's very interesting. Yeah, that's what keeps life interesting. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There's also happens to be a lot of art, I mean, you know, I was just saying my dad and my brother were in the army, and my, people might think, well, that's so different than art. But art is everywhere, like, there's a lot of art at, uh, in government buildings, yeah. and also in the armed forces with all the insignia, all oh, that nice. sculpting, they have to actually model all the insignia. Yeah. It's very detailed, It's yeah. extremely detailed, and also money. I just found out that one of our VLAs, our volunteer lawyers for the arts at GPAC, um, did an internship in college at the US Mint because of all the, they take coin, like if they're gonna design a coin that's very small, they start out really big and they sort of create a yeah. relief and do an entire thing. I mean, I had no idea. Yeah. Wow. Who would ever think these things? That sounds like an interesting process. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's just like you're working in a big agency, but there's still an enormous amount of art, and everything that you're thinking and producing is informed by your experience. You know, yeah. like by making, I mean, I'm sure making Pinocchio has something, somehow found its way into some ad something somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it will. It, you know? Some of it is conscious, you know, some of it creeps in unconsciously. It's just, mm -hmm. and then another great experience I had in Pittsburgh was teaching at the Art Institute. I was an ad oh, professor, fun. yeah, and I taught art direction and copywriting for advertising. And these kids, they're completely, you know, what they say, this billing suspension of disbelief <coughs> that they have. They don't yeah. know what the real world is when you go out and create an ad, you know. Right. You need to sell the product. But they don't have that filter. So they come up with ideas that's, I mean, way outside the box. And that's fun for me to just interact with those to kids. See. And, yeah. For sure. Because they're not jaded yet, you know, with the business. And they don't the have to go to a committee and have the committee yeah. say, this idea is terrible. <laughs> yeah, they don't <laughs> have that cigarette hanging out for a <laughs> moment. Yeah. They don't have their maker's <laughs> mark in the drawer. Yeah, like, you know. <laughs> now, I want to say, because you've had a career in uh, India and Hong Kong and America, culturally, do you, do you, what kind of differences are there in the arts community or the way it's presented? Because mm. um, I've been reading that at least India is number in the top five as far as online sales for art. Online sales? Yes. Oh, that's so interesting. So it's really, I, I think a lot of people don't realize like there's so much happening in Asia regarding arts. E-commerce. Art yeah, E-commerce, e yeah. So yeah. I was just wondering like having been in all these different places, what kind of differences have you seen that like stand out for you? Um, I think one of the biggest differences is the fact that in America we tend to be well, I guess quite recently, in the last few years at least, we try to be politically correct about everything. Yeah, uh -huh. So it's about, okay, there are these lines and you need to walk, you know, because all these different groups and interests, and I know that you have to respect everyone and their opinions and all that, but places like India or in Hong Kong, it's a little more blurry, you know. So people do get offended if you cross the line, but you have wider lanes. Interesting. Oh, that's a nice way of describing it. Yeah. yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, I do find it fascinating that sometimes, I, I mean, I, my background is in photography, as you know, okay. and so making documentary is inherently a political act. And I have people who say that documentary photography is an art, some that say it is. I say some, some friends say that you sh no art should really strive to be political, which I find unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but it seems like, do you ever, do you ever have 
people, do you find that when, for example, at your art opening in, in our offices, did you find that the um, people from India and Nepal who were there for you and, and Anoop's work responded differently than people who were not? Like about the, specifically I'm thinking about your paintings that address like Indian themes or yeah. th things that your, your personal experiences. Well, it depends on the people. Uh, most of them were very complimentary. That's great. And there were a couple of people who, you know, it's my visual interpretation of what I think is Indian. It's my own, you know. Mm. And it, a couple of people couldn't relate to some of the pieces there. Mm. They thought it was um, a little far away from their concept of what What India is to yeah. them. And each of my paintings had a, a social, political reference to Definitely. it. Yeah, and like one of them was talking about, you know, advertising and how, you know, you take a pristine landscape and you put up a billboard. Yes, and, yeah, totally. and, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. It's just nothing too serious, you know. It's just little issues that people bring up now and then. And yeah, I reference them rather than make a point about them. Yeah. Do you go back, when you go to India, do you go to art shows there? Oh yeah, I do. What's it like there? I've never been I mean, to Mumbai. Yeah, it's, it's crowded. Um, two, ways to, two words to describe it, it's a visual and um, sensory overload. A lot of people. When I was in Delhi, I was like, <laughs> I had to cross the street and I was like, how is this gonna happen? They were like, yeah. everybody was pushing, trying to get to the intersection and I was like, I don't see how this is gonna yeah. happen. This is, we're not going to be able to cross the street. This is the case with 200 most cities. 200 people cross the street at the same time. Because all these uh, young people from the rural areas gravitate towards the cities. Mm -hmm. And the cities get crowded because they're looking for opportunities in terms of jobs and sure. everything else. Yeah. And anyway, it's about 1.5 billion people. We're a passionate country and we have the numbers to prove <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I worked in... Orissa for a little bit, doing okay. some documentary there, and uh, we flew to Vishakhapatnam, yeah. and then drove the through, south of India. Yeah, yeah, drove through Andhra Pradesh and dro drove into Orissa. Okay, so we're on this in this car, and and it was so hard being on this road that wasn't quite a road road the way we <laughs> think of roads. And but my point is, I was in a rural area, yeah. and I can so relate to what you're saying because I thought, what are people really doing all the way out here? Because it's India is a gigantic subcontinent. It I mean, is. it's massive. You know? yeah. There's no, and there's so many different cultures and languages oh, yes. within the. I mean, but even I think that flying. driving through the middle of Pennsylvania, like, what are people? Like, yeah, same really thing. Doing yeah, what are they doing? What are they living? Doing? How are you living? <laughs> yeah, I guess as urbanites, it's easy for us to conject and yeah. wonder. Yeah. Um, but I also found it interesting that when we finally got to where we were going, the city was 300,000 people, and our driver uh, was like, you know, this is really a small town. We're taking to this small town. And we can there 300,000 people. I'm like, it's like the size of Pittsburgh, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. with no uh, actual real infrastructure. So you can imagine, yeah. like, here we have, like, real infrastructure and sewers, even though our water quality is terrible right now. There, there was nothing. Hmm. Just kind of hodgepodge together. Yeah. So I can understand why people would want to go to the city. There's a big disparity between the urban and the rural areas. Yeah. Yeah, but when you go there, back to the question though, when you go there and you go to art galleries, uh, is it the same kind of gallery scene that we have here, or the, the other museum? Is it the, what's it like? Yeah, in they have art galleries, museums, you know, yep. and some of them are really good contemporary artists who are exploring, you know, not just themes but materials and other things that Very just cool. knock it out of the park. Yeah, I think there's a biennial, right, or is that in Australia? A biennial in, in Mumbai? In India? Or it might be Australia, but it's for East Asian artists. Have you South thought Asian, about, South Asian like, artists. have you, um, well, let's just talk about what your plans are yeah. for the future. Like, what are you going to, what are you working on? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm working on a bunch of sculptures, you know. Um, it's called, wood. yeah, river wood is what I was thinking of calling it. It might evolve. I love that. But, yeah, it's just pieces of wood. It's, it's Pittsburgh, you know, it's from the rivers of Pittsburgh. And yeah, just I have a bunch of sketches that I've been working on for a long time. Like I That's said, cool. I, I'm a doodler, so some of it will evolve and become, you know, sculptures in wood. 
And then I'm trying to explore this whole genre of paintings where I stretch denim and I have these 3D water drops. And that was something that came about when my daughter and I, we were sitting by a window one Sunday morning and there was this stream of light coming in and she had spilled some water. And, you know, we just started talking about what would it look like if you painted it. Right, and you have a painting like that in the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to explore taking it further into different themes. Yeah, people really love that. They were yeah. Really they were really you know what really that. made my day, the day of the opening? There were three uh, kind of middle-aged ladies who walked and stood in front of the painting and then stared at it, but then eventually they went to the side of it and wanted to see if there was something that was sticking out of the canvas. Oh, that's cool, yeah. <laughs> Is this really 2D? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm not allowed to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to look on the edge. Yeah. yeah, I'm always amazed at painting because I'm a photographer, so my job is to take 3D and make it 2D, and your job is to take 2D and make it 3D, you know, which is, much, I think, much harder. Well, it's been really um, exciting to have your work yeah. Thank in our you. office and have the show Karma Log up, which will be up until July. So if anyone would like to see it, you can just contact me and I can take you up to the yeah. space. It's Karma Log, K A R M A L O G U E. Karma Log. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell the audience, tell us how to find you, get in contact with you, yeah. commission you? <laughs> right. I right? kind of like the wood thing. I'm, I'm liking the wood. Yeah, it's just Francis, F-R-A-N-C-I-S, Cletus, C-L-E-E-T-U-S, dot com. And Both names of popes. Correct. Yeah. Yes. I was raised Catholic in India. <laughs> yeah, they're quite and, a number of Catholics in India. And I went to parochial school, St. Pius X, like he wow. was saying. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, just look me up online. You know, there's a little oh. Wikipedia article about the cartoons that I do. Nice. Yeah. And I do cartoons for the Pittsburgh Technology Council. It's called It's Geek to Me. It's Geek to Me. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, some of his ideas comes from my, from my older daughter, who yes. is into computers. and Ananya. You know, yeah. yeah. She inspires some of the cartoons. And my younger daughter, Antara, is, you know. Behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> behind the camera. She's all right brain. She loves dancing, singing, painting, you name it. And hopefully, you know, she'll pick up something from where I left off. <laughs> nice. It's been good being with you today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thanks. Appreciate this it. This is wonderful. Exciting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you.